Welcome to Southern Italy and the penultimate stop of the 2022 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series from Polignano Amare, where the houses literally rise from the rocks, a stunning area. Trace Worthington here, as always, joined by cliff diving expert Joey Zuber. Glad to have you in live from the scenic Puglia region. This is the ninth season of the World Series that has dropped into this historic town. And Joey, you can always feel the good vibes here. And so why is this the location of choice for the divers competing today? Well, there's a reason why we call it the European Mecca of cliff diving. I mean, the locals are just so receptive. You've got the spectators lining the rooftops, the beaches and the cliffs. And also you've got this local culture of the kids diving from the cliff faces. A really strong connection to the competition here. So fun. Last stop took place in the small village of Sissikon, Switzerland, and the Lake Uri. And now, only one week later, another magical and scenic location for stop number seven, Polignano Amare, Italy. And the sea's rough today. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is one of the most unique locations in terms of history and architecture. The walk from the diver's exit spot, exit spot at the town beach to the platform. It's like an outdoor museum for them through the cobblestone walkways. So. Hanging out with the locals, the tourists, so authentic and intimate. We even saw the divers walk next to a wedding yesterday. It was so much, it was so cool. But Joey, let's talk about methods of motion and the different landing zone challenges before we get underway with the women's competition. Okay, a lot of athletes are accustomed to their own training environments, which have consistent visuals and conditions. But once they're on tour, each location has an entirely different set of visual challenges. The key for success is adaptability. For example, at some locations, the water can be incredibly transparent. It's so clear the athletes can't differentiate between the surface of the water and the bottom of the ocean. That's why there is a water spray and additional splashing from the rescue divers to help the athletes get a clear picture of the landing zone. In Mexico, the athletes plunge into a cenote, otherwise known as a sinkhole. The athletes start above the hole in direct sunlight, but once they pass the rim of the hole, they are adjusting for the landing in a dark and shady environment. It's like driving from daylight into a dark tunnel. It takes time for the eyes to adjust. But then in Texas, there was brown water, which is actually easier to see the surface because it's not transparent. And the landing zone is mostly in clear sunlight there. Then to throw in another element to adapt to, how about the <laughs> wow. crashing waves like we have here in Polignano, actually. Because the water is moving up and down, the visual cues for landing become a constant moving target, and that's not easy. For example, the swells can move up and down by one to two meters. And as you can see, different visuals and different environments play a huge role in the series, and the athletes who can adapt best will prevail. That is what is amazing about cliff diving, is all of the changes. 12 men, 12 women. We'll see the fourth and final round momentarily, beginning with the women as they warm up on the private balcony of the Labate home and Ider Schmidbauer looking focused. You have Rhiannon Ifland, our series leader. She could wrap up the series title today if she stays ahead of Molly Carlson. Let's check out the earlier rounds, Joey. Who stands out? Okay, watching round one, this is Zanti Panisi off to a great start to the competition, continuing with the momentum with her third place finish at the previous tour stop in Sisikon. So now in second after round one. And then we have another athlete, Ellie Smart, staying in contention. Tied with Xanthi Panissi, incidentally, after round one. So she's in second there. Having a great season so far, no doubt. Then in round two, how about this one? Diving directly from the balcony of a private resident, <laughs> Molly Carlson, highest scoring dive after round two. It's amazing how she's kept that pressure on all season, five podiums in total. But the woman on the screen is Rihanna Ifland, throwing down her high degree of difficulty dive, fighting back from third to be ranked first, coming into the fourth and final round that we'll see here today. She'll be last on the platform. And you saw the smooth waters in those first three rounds. Checking out the highlights, Joey. A much different contrast today. Yep. The weather rolling in and the waves crashing. And just as you mentioned in your methods of motion piece, you know, they have to adjust and adapt. And in this case, they had to adjust and adapt overnight yes. to these new conditions. Absolutely crazy. And for those, Joey, new to Red Bull cliff diving and wondering how it all works. No stress, we've got you. First off, eight men and eight women are permanent divers in this season. Four wildcard divers, those seeking to earn full-time positions, are added at every stop. 
which brings the total to 24 athletes. Okay, Trace, it's four rounds of diving, each of them being judged, and every single dive counts. It's only three seconds to judge a diver's execution, which includes the takeoff from the dive point, then it's the position in the air, and then you've got to get the entry absolutely vertical. Yeah, no doubt. It's going to be hard today. The scoring straightforward. Five judges present a score between 0 and 10. The low and the highs are tossed out. The remaining three are multiplied by the degree of difficulty of the dive, which then equal the total score. So clearly, the more flips and twists, the higher the degree of difficulty, Joey and I will be calling it DD all day. That's right. A little bit of slang there. At every World Series stop four, total dives make up the final score and points are awarded at each stop. Then those points are added together and they go towards the World Series standings. And all the athletes, they're chasing cliff diving's most prestigious accolade reserved for the winners of the overall title. It's called the King Kok Healy Trophy awarded in honor of the great Hawaiian sheep who launched feet first from the massive Hawaiian lava cliffs in the late 1700s. So here are the points for the women. If Lynn, now with five straight wins, keeps a comfortable lead and can close it out today and win the King Kong Healy Trophy if she stays ahead of Molly Carlson. Now you know what Molly Carlson has to do. Stay ahead of Rhiannon Iflin. A little bit more drama. Ellie Smart, Jess McCauley are tied again in third. And both of them have to watch out for Xanthia Panisi closing in after her podium finish last week in Sisakon. And typical of the Pognano Amare fan base. Absolutely packed in to watch the world's best. As you mentioned, Joey, this is the European home to glyph timing and thousands here to watch this competition. 12 women, 12 men, and five judges. The world-class judges are here. Anka Piper leads the way. She's the head judge. Surreal Amechkan. You have Jeff Arbin and Steve Foley from Australia. So a little double dose of Aussies for you. And Marion Reif. So Aussies, that'll be a good party with those two together. Oh, All right. yes, we know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Combined with the Italians, it works just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and the weather, again, has changed dramatically. Even though sunny outside, air temperature, beautiful, 22, 71 degrees Fahrenheit. But then the winds, 26 kilometers per hour, 16 miles per hour. And that is continuing to shift a little bit. We'll keep you posted if we get those gusts of wind. But right now, the word is the wind is very steady. Now, the start list after three rounds is in reverse order. So Maria Paula Quintero, who had the lowest score after three rounds, will dive first. Is he Harrison Schmidbauer? Maley Carpenter of the United States has been having a great season as a wild card diver. She will go six. And then the top seat coming into the fourth and final round, led by Addie Jimenez. Jess McCauley will dive eight. Then you have Ellie Smart. Xanthia Panisi, who was on the podium last week. Molly Carlson and Rhiannon Nifflin battling it out, trying to close it out for Rhiannon Nifflin as far as the King Kong Keeley Trophy goes. And Molly Carlson trying to keep it alive for another stop and push the battle to the final in Sydney, Australia. Let's get underway with our first diver on the women's side. 21 meters, 70 feet off the water is Maria Palacantero of Colombia, celebrating her 20th career World Series start. And here the water, Joey, and the waves crashing. Here she goes. So Quintero starts things off and launches the first time that we've seen anybody land in the rough seas compared to yesterday in the qual or the first three rounds, Joey. Wow. I'm super impressed with that dive. Under these conditions, sometimes you need a little bit of luck to dive well. Actually, just after she hit the water, you'll notice actually there's a big backsplash coming off the cliff face and then washing into the area. So she seemed to just catch so that can, right it moment. Can, it can yeah. add or subtract maybe one meter to three feet. 100%. So imagine, let's say, the wave kind of dives down, right? You hit the lull of the wave, not the peak of the wave. It'll actually be higher. So in some circumstances, you may see the athletes over-rotate, but it looks like got great conditions. It was nice and flat for, uh, for Maria Paolo Quintero with this particular dive, but I've got to give her a lot of credit. Good takeoff. Managed the wind pretty well. Yesterday's conditions was a lot more gusty, less wavy, but the gusts of wind is where the athletes 
struggle. So when it's a steady wind, it's a little bit easier to hold your balance, particularly in those dives where you're standing backwards and rotating in towards the platform. But here it is, the feet first landing, 71 kilometers per hour. Let me tell you, that is tough. So here in Point Anna Omari is where she achieved her first and only World Series podium, placing second in 2019. And that right there is the most challenging part of the day for the divers. Is the, is just the dock, the walk to the beach. You call it the angry snake. <laughs> and it is nasty. It's like trying to catch a wave surfing, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So remember, five judges, and the high and the lower toss, the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty, will await the scores for Maria Paula Quintero of Colombia, first to go of 12. And you can see the platforms, a good shot there. Joey mentioned 21 meters, 70 feet for the women's platform. The men's 27 meters, 90 feet off the water. Quintero with a 266.45 is a grand total after four rounds of diving added together. So, we have Amy Harrison. She made her debut here back in 2019, putting on a show, and it's really been coming on strong, the 28-year-old Canadian, and has one of the most difficult dives in the world now, putting it down in competition. The first one ever to do that front quad half pike, Joey. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. It's great to see new athletes trying new skills trying to manage the rough seas. That degree of difficulty, that high degree of difficulty dive was done in her third round. So in her fourth round, bit of a change. So Amy Harrison dropping into the Adriatic Sea for her fourth and final dive. It's only her fourth start of this season, gaining a ton of experience. Yeah. Experience is where it counts. So the more locations you travel to, dealing with different visuals, like we talked about earlier in the show, wind, waves, flat water, sometimes it's cold. A lot of the athletes talked about the competition in Sisicon, for example, the cold water being a lot harder, a lot more dense. Look at that. I mean, That's just choppy, isn't just it? Just really choppy now that we're underway with the competition. You and I have a better visual on what's going on. I mean, these guys have got to deal with so much. A lot of the people ask us, these athletes must have no fear. There is always fear. And then to deal with the conditions, that adds a whole nother level to the nerves before the dive. So it's really important to visualize your dive before you do it to try and picture it perfectly. You can see her landing Ooh. quite heavy there, yeah, short of yeah, vertical. Yeah. And that's a hard hit right up into the chin there. So rather unfortunate. But as we said before, it's all about gaining experience currently. So, you know, in any sport, it's like a hard hit in football or oh, a, yeah. a trip in soccer. Will she feel that later? Oh, she will. And that's the thing, when you haven't been high diving or cliff diving for quite a while, the next day you wake up sore in the neck. You actually, your body has to get used to that impact once again, but she'll feel that tomorrow. And here's, the, again, the most challenging part of the event. The angry snake, 55 on that dive. So all four scores, all four rounds added together, 256-9-0. So Harrison with that dive will move into second. So we're only two down of 12 on the women's side. Orlando Duque there, the Red Bull Cliff Diving legend and pioneer. He's our new World Series Sport Director. 13 world titles, winner of nine Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series competitions. I think he's won here before, hasn't he? Did, yes. Orlando. Indeed, I believe it's 2009. Hey, 2009. So Orlando keeping an eye on things, making sure the divers are represented well, they're getting what they need, everything is safe. All right, going back to the top now. Iris Schmidbauer, the 27-year-old from Germany. Founder Groove placing fourth at the last stop. Look at the degree of difficulty on the left. That denotes what type of dive they're doing and how high the tariff is, 4.3. Very high, very difficult. Schmidbauer, very nice entry for the 27-year-old German Zyber, somebody who has been trying to work up the ranks in the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. She's had success, again, with that fourth place finish last week, Joey, and over the past two months, winning the U.S. High Diving Challenge, and then another victory at the European Championship. She's getting closer to the podium, I'll tell you. She's almost there. I believe it was in, uh, in Beirut, Lebanon. She was just about a point away. She was in fourth, almost making third place. 
So degree of difficulty, this is what it's all about in the fourth and final round. So the more somersaults and the more twists that you add, the higher the tariff. This is a back direction. There's one and a half twists in the beginning. Then you enter the pike. Now watch this. This is very important. This is called a Barani, a front somersault with a half twist. That skill is taken from the sport of trampolining. It allows the athlete to see the surface until the very end. And of course, they're landing feet first. Why? Because it's 21 meters. In the sport of diving, for example, Olympic diving, it's 10 meters, they're landing head first. But at those speeds, 71 kilometers per hour, Oof. you need to land feet first. You can see a feet flattening there, making a hole for the body to pass through. Tiny bit short of vertical, but commendable under these conditions. Well done, Iris Schmidbauer. Pretty amazing. She comes, she doesn't come from a professional diving background. And nobody comes from the background of walking the angry snake. It's like, <laughs> It's like you the high, it's like, it. the, it's like the highway to the danger zone. Yes, I broke out a Top Gun reference already. Anyway, thank you. 304.75 for her final score. So Schmidt Bauer of Germany, 304.75. Kenny Loggins, by the way, wrote that song. All right. <laughs> Schmidt Bauer now, Jana Netzirava. Celebrating her 30th career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. One of the OGs. Her season best finish was last week in Sisicon. A lot of fatigue these guys are coming in. And now you have the rough waters, Joey. After her dive, I'd love to hear your thoughts on tour fatigue and what it's like from stop to stop dealing with all of the challenges thrown at them. Wind's blowing around a little bit. Here she goes. So Netsirava a little bit over rotated on that. And Joey, maybe that timing you were talking about with the waves didn't hit her. It's hard with the visuals. exact time, yeah. It's really hard with the visuals. I mean, sometimes you're trying to grab an eye line on a dive like that where you're looking back towards the cliff face and you're looking for that horizontal line and then occasionally it's not there because the waves are moving up and down. And then we talk, we talk about the tour fatigue of the, of the permanent divers and she's one of them. Yep. But now you have that mental fatigue over the past couple days with the first three rounds and now the rough seas. Yeah, they've been doing basically a competition for the last three days. So there was a competition yesterday and the day before yesterday. So you're sort of waking up constantly Constantly nervous, so mentally, yes, you do get very drained, and then physically, it's very yeah, draining. So we've had two back-to-back -back competitions. You know, just a week ago, we were in Sisicon. So this is competition number seven. They've got other competitions, other events like the European Championships, and the body starts to get tired. So you really have to find the right amount of rest. You need to rest for about two to three days after competition, then get back to your exercise, your conditioning, your stomach your abdominal muscles, your legs and so forth, but you need to do a lot of pre-season training to develop the muscle bulk to allow yourself to push through the entire season. But let me tell you, most of these athletes, they're injured. They've got some kind of injury. You're not coming into this competition feeling in perfect form. You're really not. I think it's interesting too. A wild card diver, you want a full-time position, then you have a full-time permanent spot. Yeah. And you're like, man, I, I got to get in shape for this series. Well, Nikita was talking about that. Yeah. So it's like, it was actually easier being a wild card diver. Now this year is like, joy, it's tough. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's Yarava choosing not to walk the angry snake. Probably a good idea. A lot of rocks, though. Everyone's underneath got their the own water. style. Their own <laughs> technique. Let, let them do their thing. No, you, you, you do talk to the divers, and it is gnarly. But props to every diver who committed to coming out here and saying, look, let's get this competition rolling. Yep. This is right, and I, what Orlando Duque said it was best. He goes, this is Red Bull Cliff Diving. Yeah. Let's do this. This ain't ping pong, people. Yeah. <laughs> no disrespect. But <laughs> exactly. Love it. Schmidt Bauer remains the leader with 304.75, and Neti Raba, who you just saw dive, 279.30. Zero. In third is Quintero, and all the dark blue have not dove yet, so we are four down of 12 women. Remember, the last three include Xanthia Panisi, Molly Carlson, and Rhiannon Iflin, who will dive last because she is the top seed coming into the final round. So here is young Alyssa Cassetti of Italy, the 20-year-old, the youngest female diver on the start list, and how about this, making her debut on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series here in Italy last season in her home country. And in the three starts in her life, her personal best was actually last week in Sisicon, placing eighth. But what a treat for the young diver to be here in her home country. She's coached by Alessandro De Rose. Amazing. And the fans here. 
are first class. You always get a warm reception from them, especially if you're a local Italian. Yeah, completely con different, different conditions than last year. So we'll see how she handles it from last year and yesterday to today. Dropping it. Wow, check that out. Nice The work. wild card diver, Alyssa Cassetti, in her fourth ever World Series start, crushing the landing. I'm not intimidated by the big waves. I'm so impressed of how much she's learned with each competition. As you were saying, she doesn't have a hell of a lot of experience, but really quickly, she's picking it up and she's taking a lot of advice from Alessandro De Rose. It's unfortunate he's not diving with us here today, but she's got great mentors. Now, what I love about the Italians, they have a particular style, the way that they dive, so each country will have their own form, something yeah. recognizable, particularly when she's doing her back takeoffs. Alessandro and the two other divers that we'll see in the men's competition have an almost identical style with their backward takeoffs. But Alyssa Corsetti, this is a triple half. That is diving terminology that we use with all the cliff divers. There comes the double, there comes the Barani. And they work with the trampoline coach regularly every week to hone in those feet first landings. Alyssa Corsetti, be proud in front of your home crowd. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Once again, five judges, the high and the low toss. The remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. Wow, eights across the board is what she'll keep. 3.4 degree of difficulty. So 81.60, you see that in yellow? That's her fourth and final dive and all four added together. Cassetti moves into second, 296. She has to be proud of that. So moving on in the women's competition, we have the rough seas coming up next will be Maley Carpenter of the United States as we look a beautiful shot of the picturesque town of Polignano Amare. The rooftop terraces overlooking the sea, absolutely breathtaking. Lama Manakele Beach is the exit point for the divers. And Maley Carpenter currently ranked number six in the World Series points, hoping to close the point gap between she and Xanthia Panisi. However, Panisi, you remember, hit the podium last week in Sisakon, Switzerland, expanding her lead. So Maley Carpenter, a lot of splashing going on there. Joey will see in the replay and break that down. But nevertheless, Melee Carpenter, who's had a wonderful season as a wild card diver, maybe not having the landing she was looking for here. Yep, very, very, very rough indeed. You can see all the safety divers. They always huddle around the athlete. Just in case, it did look like a relatively hard landing from a distance. So as a matter of safety, they always huddle around the athletes. She's got a lot of experience performing in shows around the world, so she's accustomed to diving under pressure. Oof. You can see that's a really, really tough landing. Under-rotated, diving terminology, landing short of vertical. Just trying to pick what happened. Maybe there wasn't enough rotation from the top of the dive. There's the Bryony. I'm just going to pull it out here. Looks like she was just running out of room on the dive, and normally that stems from the takeoff. Potentially, the waves could have been coming up, reducing the amount of height. But perhaps just a little bit cut off on the platform. Cut off meaning not jumping up enough. And most just running out of room on the dive. So getting the speed right on takeoff is absolutely critical. That was a tough landing, and that would have knocked the wind out of her. Hits you in the stomach, hard to breathe after a dive like that. I was going to say, most of us on the planet have done a belly flop before, Joey, but imagine doing one from 21 meters, 70 feet off the water. Did look like she did catch the crest of the wave there. That was a, that was a tough one for Maley Carpenter. Well, look at that. The angry snake, she opted out of that, which tells me she's all right because the safety divers are not with her any longer. So Bailey Carpenter will wait her scores and hope she's all right, seems to be, as she swims into the town beach. So many standings right now on the left-hand side. You have Schmidbauer still holding down the top spot with 304.75. Nancy Arava rounds out the top three. Carpenter, who you just saw dive in fourth. Those in dark blue down below. 
have not dove yet, but let's head down to the hot spot with Dave O.C., who's with young Elisa Cassetti. Dave. Let's begin by talking about the conditions. How challenging was it to actually dive? Uh, it's crazy. I dove with the wind in Copenhagen, but never with waves. And I think that the scariest part was uh, uh, walking here. <laughs> and what about here in front of the home crowd? Does that make it extra special? Yeah, sure. Uh, today there are many, many people and it's uh, super funny because you hear the crowd and it's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks a lot, Dave O.C. Hanging with us in the hot spot. And great to hear from young Elisa Cassetti. Remember her name. She'll be around for a while. Adria, sorry, Addy Mendez coming up now, the 37-year-old making her return to the World Series after missing the last stop in Sissikon, Switzerland. A consistent fourth place finisher over the years here in Pognano Amare. Such a spectacular diver to watch. Straight forward on that, and Adi Jimenez with the experience puts one down, the black belt in karate, chopping through the waters, or chopping through the choppy waters. Yeah, that's what you need. <laughs> that's called cross-training, people. <laughs> How was this break it down? You know Addie well, you've known her diving over the years, Joey, and at this point in the competition, how are the divers feeling with these conditions? I mean, what goes through the mind? When you're on that platform, you hear the crashing waters. Addie's used to it. Tell us. Well, to be honest, you have to try and block it out as best as you can. It's always in the back of your mind, but you still need to think about what you need to do in the takeoff. You need to think, OK, I need a strong takeoff. It's very easy to sometimes back off in the takeoff, get intimidated with the location, with the height. But she's pressing deep here, and she's really attacked the takeoff. Let's look at aerial awareness. She'll count the water here once, and then the head will tilt back twice there. And just after you see the water for the second time, she kicks out. Looking at the water, this is where the acceleration curve really picks up. She's done a really nice job. She's got wonderful form in the air. Great elevation from the platform. That's called a reverse takeoff where you're facing forwards and rotating back towards the platform. So again, that's reverse. Some people call it gainer, slang terms. Really, really nice dive there. Just slightly hunched on entry. <laughs> and Addie, the little princess playing it safe. <laughs> I don't blame her. It's all right, Addie. <laughs> yeah, like, Where's she always my has wheelie? Fun. Where's my trolley? <laughs> she always has fun. Smile on her face. This is her 35th start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series and really becoming one of the icons of the sport. And good for her. She's walked that she's walked that many times before, so she knows the dangers of it. Yeah. <laughs> she knows the consequences of the snake. All right. Addie Minas now moves into the top spot with that by a long shot. So 328-50 for the 37-year-old Mexican diver. Schmidbauer bumped to second, Cassetti in third. And Adi Jimenez, seven to go of 12. The top seed, the top five are coming up next. But first, we'll head to the platform. David Colturi is injured, but he's hanging with us doing some reporting, and he's at the top with Molly Carlson. Dave. Yep. Hey, thanks, Trey. So I'm here with Molly. So yesterday brought the wind, today brought the waves. What do you do to stay composed and, and take on these ever-changing conditions? The conditions are always going to change. You kind of have to be prepared in Rebel Cliff Diving for anything. And we woke up this morning and the ocean was insane. And I think uh, just being out here doing my practice dive, practicing how I'm going to step differently into my dive uh, really worked out. Absolutely. Go get it. Let's do it. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Dave. Managing that win nicely with the headband today. Jessica McCauley is coming up next, 29 years old, currently tied in third with Ellie Smart in the overall World Series points. And 
what does she have for a dive, Joey? 3.9 degree of difficulty. Identical dive to Adriana Jimenez. First trip somersault in the tuck position. She wants to move ahead of Adriana Jimenez. She'll need eight. Now look at Jessica, she's looking at the ocean. She's looking to see if she can find a lull in the sets of waves. Pretty smart thing to do right now. Second overall after the 2021 World Series closeout. And what's she doing here? Signifying that does she want more splash from the safety divers down below, or is it just a... She's just telling them, get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm diving. Okay. That's actually what was happening. Good idea. <laughs> in the business putting one down in the rough waters of the Adriatic Sea and again tied with Ellie Smart in third place in the overall World Series points needs a good result today to continue or maybe push Ellie one spot down Let's see what the judges think of this one Joey what do you think look at I think she's put herself in a good position to possibly move ahead of Adriana Jimenez, like we were saying before. Almost an identical kind of style of execution as well. Great takeoff, good flight in the air. Very tall athlete as well. So she has to work extra hard. So she does another dive that she did in the previous round in the pike position. This is the tuck position. So the tuck position carrying slightly less degree of difficulty, but in the reverse direction. Very hard to make a reverse triple somersault pike, but what a beautiful and graceful athlete she is. One of the tallest, the tallest female diver at five feet, eight inches, Joey. And that water, really only about five-ish meters, 17-ish feet, not no. that deep. No. So she'll be landing there and probably traveling about four to four and a half meters. It was a pretty good entry. The more vertical you are, the deeper you go. The wobbly worm. Now it's time for that. They should give away a King Kaakili trophy to the diver who tackles the dangerous dragon. I'm trying to figure out different names for it. I just want to see someone do it on a skateboard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jessie McCauley. Oh man, she's done, she did a great job. Who gave her the flip now? Where did that come from? That's where it gets gnarly right there because there's rocks in the water. McCauley now moves into the top spot with 334 as a grand total when you add all four dives together. So, Jessica McCauley, now four women remaining in this competition. As the men prepare, 12 of them, Artem Selchenko, 38 years old. He's won here two times before. Love watching that man dive. He and 11 other men coming up shortly. They're getting ready on the balcony, including that man, Gary Hunt, leading after three rounds of diving. He's won here four straight. When you include the Puglia stop, the double header last season. But here is Ellie Smart before the men get underway. Number one qualifier after two rounds of diving, but she missed her third round. Push her back a little bit. Still having a great season from the United States. So Ellie Smart trying to navigate these waters, Joey. It is not easy so far for anybody you can tell. And you talk about the shifting of the swells and that compared to yesterday and when it is flat water, wow. Just from the layman's eyes, you can see the difference. Can I be honest? Sometimes you need a little bit of luck coming your way. Yeah. You know, so you need a bit of luck to get that flatter part of the wave or catch it between the waves. But as we saw earlier, people catching the top of the wave or the bottom of the wave can have disastrous effects. But Eleanor Smart choosing to do a twisting dive here. So the athletes will choose dive that they prefer to do, that they feel more comfortable doing. So some athletes, like we saw with Adriana Jimenez and Jessica McCauley, choosing rotating dives. But twisting dives suit Eleanor Smart best. But Eleanor Smart having the season of her life. 
been absolutely on fire, so consistent. We saw some incredible entries from her in the previous competitions. Just slightly missing the landing. So watch how one arm sets, generates the twist there. There'll be two and a half twists. The arms will come out wide to stop the twist. And then you enter that feet first adjustment landing period. And it comes up super, super quick from these heights. Oof. More than twice the height of an Olympic high board. Tied in series points with Jessica McCauley. Trying to break that up a little bit. Roll in her fourth round dive of 74-10. Puts her in third with 317. And look at the wheels on Ellie Smart. Out running the worm. The angry snake chasing her. As Molly Carlson makes her way through the quaint village of Ponyano Omari in the whitewashed cobblestone streets. This is the walk to the platform, folks. Gotta love that, hey? Having a little spot of lunch, checking out the cliff divers. Not something you see every day, is it? <laughs> Typical Molly there, too, just making sure she's acknowledging everybody and the fans. She loves it. All right, Santia Panisi has made her way up to the top of the podium. Continues to have a great season, hitting the podium twice, a second and a third. Still in fifth overall in the World Series points. 18 points behind Ellie Smart and Jess McCauley, who are tied for third at the moment. She has a shot at getting into the top three if she has a good dive here. Okay, to push ahead, she'll need eights from the judges. Keep that in the back of your mind. Down to the last three divers now. Pressure's on. So Xanthia Panisi now trying to put the pressure on Ellie Smart and Jess McCauley. But Joey, I, I, I'm going to go back to your comment. Look at the crashing water. I mean, just wailing up against the rocks. It has to be intimidating. Going back to your luck comment, I totally agree with you. Just a little bit of luck. Unless you're Laird Hamilton sitting up there and you can oh, read this. I feel a little bit bad for Max, the cameraman. I mean, this guy's just getting bucketed around. Like, yeah. But you can really see from that water angle how much you're moving up and down. So this is a back triple fall. She comes around, lining up for the entry. Just a slight over rotation. You can see that blow back. The wave's just smashing in there coming across to the landing site it's Anthony Panissi competition by competition is really improving well, will the judges understand sort of that luck you're talking about maybe give a little on the on the on the entries or they're just gonna say hey look that's what this is about it's cliff diving. It is. I mean it's the same for everybody I mean they're just gonna have to judge the dive on those three parts to take off the flight and the landing you kind of just have to kind of push the waves out and say okay well they landed like this yeah you know a little bit of the luck of the draw or I love about Xanthia working really hard on a strength training really powerful takeoffs you have to do a lot of explosive training and strength training good elevation from the platform. That's what you call the pike position. Coming around here, but unfortunately, just a slight over rotation, but we're talking split oh. seconds. Oh. That's just nothing at the end of the dive. But very proud of her for how she's evolved and progressed as an athlete. Five judges, the high and the lower toss. So she'll keep a six and a half, a seven, a seven and a half for a 79.80. So total after four added together, 325. For Panisi, the 23-year-old of Australia. So Macaulay still with 334 in the lead. Adi Jimenez holding on to second with 328. And then Panisi, who we just saw dive with a 325. So two to go, which means Jessica McCauley guaranteed a podium. But first, here's the battle between the two. Molly Carlson and Rihanna Nifflin. It hasn't been easy for Rihanna Nifflin all season long because of that pressure from Molly Carlson after she kicked off the win in yeah. Boston. Yeah, that was an incredible competition. Imagine that. This is the first event of the year, and you win it. You send a signal to Rihanna Nifflin, but Rihanna Nifflin says, mm-mm-mm. Yep. Yeah. And she went on to win every single competition so far. But Molly Carlson has stayed right behind her, basically podium at every single stop, bar one. But Rihanna Nifflin, formidable, strong mentally. I love how they both up, to, up their de degree of difficulty yeah. this season. In Sisicon, that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Both showing off their new dives, tit for tat. 
the Adriatic Sea and the Achilles heel of the southern Italian coastline to give you an idea. Just about a 45 minute drive from Bari, short distance from Rome. So Molly Carlson, ranked number two in the overall series. This is the most pivotal dive of the 2022 season for the 23-year-old Canadian. She has to stay ahead of Rihanna Nifflin in the points yep. in order to push the, a shot for her to earn the King Kai Keeley Trophy yep. to Sydney, Australia at the final stop one month from now. As if Rhiannon stays ahead of her, the series is hers. You can see right there the point spread. It's not easy. Okay, let's get this into context. In with three somersaults. Half twist, Molly needs eight from the judges. So big dive, a big moment. It looked good from here, Joey. And Jessica McCauley, the leader, she knows it. A big sign of appreciation from her. Again, one of the most important dives for the season. Or it, it is the most important dive for Molly Carlson because she knows who's coming up. Rhiannon Ifflin next. And Molly is 210 points behind Rhiannon Ifflin in the overall series. Folks, to put in context with this particular competition, Ooh. It's going to be tight to get those scores of eights. I'm not entirely sure. The judges will sit on that side angle and the best angle to judge the divers. They need to judge how close they are from the platform, how high they are from the platform. Are their legs together? Are the toes pointed? Molly Carlson has exquisite form and technique. I love how she really attacks that takeoff, throws hard, stays nice and close to the platform. You need that to maintain the rotation. Beautiful pike kick out, squeezing the body so tight. She's got great form, hair short vertical, but her fate will be left in the yeah. judges' hands right here in Polignano Amare. Molly Carlson's degree of difficulty, 3.8. Zant, or Rihanna Nifflin coming up as 4.0 slated for her degree of difficulty. So she'll keep a pair of eights and a seven and a half. Enough for the lead, 336.70. And now she will try and tackle the drastic dragon. It's good. <laughs> you have to come up with one. <laughs> All right, so Rihanna Nifflin now knows what she has to do in her dive. And again, Joey, you mentioned a bit of luck. And I'm just going to throw this out there. Molly Carlson comes from traditional, di you know, traditional diving background. She got into cliff diving not, I mean, just only a couple years ago. Yeah. Rihanna Nifflin has been on fire since her debut. Comes from a surfing background. Mm -hmm. Understands the swells, can read the waves. We've talked about that before and how she can navigate the ocean yeah. and really think things through. She looks relaxed. She looks poised. If she stays ahead of Molly Carlson, she will earn her sixth sixth King Kyle Keeley trophy for the season. In a familiar position, last woman standing on the platform. She always has a good look at the ocean, trying to gauge what's happening. This is critical, crucial, and poignant moment this season. King Ka Keeley Trophy on the line. Number six for Iflin. Eight, seven and a half from the judges. Whoa, and Iflin leaves the door open just a teeny bit on that entry, Joey. I'm going to leave it up to you to break it down, but this is super interesting. We may be pushing this to the final stop in Sydney. Will the degree of difficulty outweigh the entry? And this is a relatively new dive for Rihanna Niflan. So she was training at Air 47, trying to hone it in. But it's only the second time she's put this into practice in a competition. Takeoff was great. The flight was good. But again, we reiterate the conditions, the swells may play a factor. Good takeoff, beautiful bite. 
great form. It looked like she was a little bit fast on the dive. You can see her really stretching it out at the end of the dive. I can break that down in the next replay. Watch this. Is the pike two. Holding, 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 holding. Yet yeah, she just stayed straight as long as she could. So when she came out of the dive, she knew she was quite quick by staying straight as long as she could. She was trying to slow down the rotation. I love the takeoff. Look at that head flicking back, trying to spot the water. Really, the takeoff and everything was good. Just a tiny bit quick, holding on. Ooh. A hair of an over rotation, but still remember, remember, they got to look at all parts of the dive equally. The takeoff, the flight, and the entry all combine. And she's still the score from the judges. And she still has more points coming into this fourth and final round. Going to be so super close, super close. We'll see. 33 podiums out of 35 starts. Rihanna Niflin decides to swim around the angry snake. A big hug for Molly Carlson. The judges weigh in on Ifland. Will she bring home another King Cock Healy Trophy? The sixth of her career. She'll do it with those eight and a half. 102. Rihanna Ifland, 354-30. The unstoppable force of cliff diving. Rihanna Ifland locks in the King Cock Healy Trophy for the 2022 season and will hoist it high at the final stop in Sydney, Australia, one month from, na from now. I mean, there was so much pressure. We know how brilliant Rhiannon is, but she's human. She feels that pressure. And it would have been so hard coming into the last competition of the year in a home country, Sydney, Australia. And that really to go into the last stop of the season, knowing you're gonna hoist the King Kai Kelly Trophy, in front of your home crowd, no matter what. I mean, what a relief for her. Wow. <laughs> so Rihanna Niflin sealing the deal in Poniano Amare with another win of this season. So that makes 34 podiums and 29 career wins. And you can see the bottom seven on the leaderboard. It has not been an easy day for the women, and I anticipate the men having their challenges coming up shortly. But congratulations to Rhiannon and Iflin. And the victory in Ponyan Omare. Still a good little point battle going on now. Carlson wants to stay in second for the season. You have Ellie Smart, Jessica McCauley. Get set for the man. What a beautiful shot of Puglia's scenic coastline that stretches over 800 kilometers, 500 miles. And here is round one where it all began. And look at the conditions here where Molly, or, uh, <laughs> where, where Rhiannon kicked it off, Joey. A lot different. So all four rounds count. This was the intermediate round. Front triple half. You can see it flat count there. Look at this. Straight out of someone's balcony. Walking through their house, grab a cup of coffee, <laughs> plunge off the balcony. I love it. Then it comes back to the platform for the optional rounds. Her most difficult dive back, triple full. This is where she made up for lost ground from third. Coming into the number one position in round three, so she'll be the last woman on the platform. Coming into the competition, and here is the dive that sealed the deal and sealed the deal for the King Kai Kili Trophy. What a wonderful moment for Rihanna Nifland to know that she's done it here in the penultimate stop. What a sensation in any sport for that matter. Brilliant. King Kai Kili Ri. Dude, you're on fire. Oh, <laughs> un <laughs> unstoppable Ifland is down on the beach with Dave O.C. Dave, take it away. They're calling it the King Kai Killy Re now at this point. <laughs> Re, exceptional diving all weekend. I think today was the first time I saw true emotion. How much does this win mean to you today? Yeah, you know, um, this means everything to me. It's It's been such a... A long season and it's been tough uh, mentally and it's uh, there's been a lot of pressure and I guess you know finishing it off uh, in conditions like this makes it uh, 
just that little bit extra special. Uh, and I think, you know, knowing that Sydney is the next event, I really wanted. So Rihanna Nifflin, who now cannot be caught. Coming into the final stop in Sydney, Australia with 1,360 points. Molly Carlson still well into second place. The battle continues between Jess and Ellie in that third and fourth place position and Xanthia Panisi trying to chase them down. That is going to be fun to watch at the final stop one month from now, October 15th in Sydney, Australia. As we get ready for the men, let's take a minute and check out this beautiful area located in Italy's Puglia region and hear what past winners had to say and why they love it. I love this place, I love this area. I was really excited to come back here. It's a dream to be here, so many places to jump from. Just beautiful inside, you walk around, it's all these little streets, there's really picturesque, really beautiful. It's my kind of town, uh, small streets, a lot of old buildings, stone, you get a, a, an amazing atmosphere. Amazing weather for swimming, enjoy. We have great food, great gelato. Ice cream, it's, it's a miracle. The spectators, of course, it's very friendly. The people are just like so encouraging and I think it's just the whole vibe of the place. Like, this is Italy. After you do your dive, you exit at the beach, you walk through the whole town in your bathing suit and everybody's clapping, everybody's saying hi. And it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. What else can I say? It feels like you come home every time you're walking around. time in nine seasons on the World Series that it's taken place here. Great history, passionate fans, epic wins, records broken. And now it's time to get into the gents. And it's getting interesting here. Freda puts him on top with 870 points. Gary Hunt in second only, or sorry, in third. Aiden Heslop in second right now. Look at the point spread. So Heslop only six points ahead of Gary Hunt. Popovich is out, so that'll make things interesting. He'll be back for the last stop. Alessandro De Rose, the local hero, he's not here. So that opens up the door for Nikita Fedotov maybe to move into that top four spot. Remember, when we talk about wild card divers versus permanent divers, the top four have an invite automatically for next season. But divers in the earlier rounds, we'll start it off with Gary Hunt. Joey, take us through it. He was on fire. Uh, on fire he was, and incidentally, this man has never missed a beat with his intermediate dive in Boston scoring nines, Paris scoring tens, Jonathan Perez on the platform, first time diving from the balcony on his journey back to form. Now we're watching Alexei Prigorov, round three. Now he puts himself in a stone's throw and for a chance for his first podium. So currently in third after three rounds of diving, mixing things up, seeing new faces. On the leaderboard, there's Aiden Heslop. Juggling away, and you know, that is something that Gary Hunt's done over the years. And Gary Hunt, once a Brent, now diving for France. But uh, let's get to know Aiden Heslop. Take 60 seconds with the youngest permanent diver here. For Red Bull when I was here in 2018. So I've got some, some more experience under my belt. Uh, a few wins this year. To win in Sissicon was super exciting for me. I hit all four dives and that makes me happier than any win I could possibly get. To fight against Gary uh, for this world championship is, is something special to me. You know, I've looked up to him for, for years and years and to even be competing with him and standing on the podium with him is, is an honor for me, but I do want to beat him, you know? When I was younger, I always wanted this to happen and I knew that someday it could come along, but not quite as early as it has now. You know, I've got so many years uh, ahead of me to come, but this is the, the first one where I can really fight for that championship. To stand on, on top of the podium is something special, but if I know in myself that I've done well in that competition, I'm, I'm happy. The youngest permanent male diver here. That was a great shot right there. Youngest ever win on the World Series. And we'll 
see him towards the end of the start list. So Davide Baraldi, the wild card diver of Italy, will kick it off for the men. That's the lowest score after three rounds of diving. It's in reverse order. Nikita Fedotov, who has a shot to pull into the top four, he'll dive sixth. Selchenko, the 38-year-old, the oldest guy in this event, will dive seven. And then you have the top three, Prigorov, Paredes, who's back in the top three. And then Gary Hunt, who has won here four straight times. He will dive last. Big men's competition on tap here in Ponyan Omari. Trace Worthington alongside Joey Zuber. We have David O.C. at the hot spot. David Colturi is out with an injury, so he's reporting for us at the top by the platform. Good to have him with us. And everybody filling the rocks on the opposite side of the water, the town beach, the historic bridge, so much history. The European home to cliff diving and home to Davide Baraldi. One of two Italian men making their debut on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. He replaces the injured Alessandro De Rose, who a lot of fans came out to watch, the winner of this event in 2017. And there's the bridge I'm talking about right there. What a great shot. The narrow arches, massive columns. The signature spot in Polignano. Davide taking his time. Strong winds. Just trying to gain some valuable experience at this point. Back two somersaults with one twist. It's ready now. Here we go. Baralde, big splash on that one, but not bad for the debut of Davide Baraldi, 21 years old, launching from 27 meters, 90 feet. That's the men's platform height. The equivalent of an eight-story high-rise. And let me tell you, when you look down, it's a whole nother ball game. It's easy to stand on the beach watching these divers. <laughs> but let me tell you, it's a terrifying walk to the end of the platform. I love watching these Italian athletes. They've got such a distinct style. We spoke about this earlier in the show with the women. The Lisa Cosetti now watch how he jumps up and then does a half turn, spots the water, and then comes around for that all important Barani front somersault, the half twist, the feet first landing. Strong impact, you can see him catching the crest of the wave there. It's where you set one arm and you start to twist. I love how he just gets a beautiful glimpse of the water. Oh, there's the water. Looks like a familiar, uh, familiar form. But I love looking at these relatively simple dives. There's nothing simple about diving from these heights. But it does show the grace, the elegance, and the speed at which they're rocketing towards the Adriatic Sea here in Polignano Amare. So the cat walk, the cat wobble, I should say. The angry snake walk to the beach, one of the most challenging part of the day for all the divers. So Beraldi comes in with his score. We get ready for Sergio Guzman. Always entertaining, getting the crowd fired up. Former diving coach from Mexico City. Passionate and skilled salsa dancer. His second showing of the season after the Paris stop where he placed ninth. Back in that wild card spot, trying to inch his way back onto the series. Eight permanent divers are named, both men and women as permanent divers for the next season. The remaining four each stop are filled by wildcard divers. Sergio Guzman, if you can look at the screen on the left there, it tells you what type of dive he's doing. So it's reverse somersault with four Reverse takeoff, four somersaults. Space forwards, move away from the platform, rotate back towards the platform. See if you can count the somersaults. Just 
getting the scuba divers out of the way. So what happens sometimes is the waves will push them into the landing zone a little bit. So you need a little bit of time just to let the swell push them back, and get into position to be safe for the athletes. Flips going on there. So Sergio Guzman plummeting into the Adriatic Sea for his fourth dive. And Joe, you talk about it. You were telling me twisting versus flipping. You know, a lot of divers pr prefer the twisting. Yep. Maybe they can see it differently. Guzman likes the flipping, just straight over flips. Yep. So you've got to play to your strengths and play to something that makes you feel more comfortable. It's all about being comfortable from those incredible heights. As we said earlier, 27 meters, 90 feet high. Everything is about aerial awareness and degree of difficulty. So if you do this dive spinning backwards, if you're standing backwards on the platform, the degree of difficulty is 4.3, but if you do it reverse, you increase the degree of difficulty to 4.5. But when you're rotating back towards the platform while moving forward, it makes the rotation super heavy. So you just got that huge flick back of the head trying to spot for the landing. A lot of the athletes and the coaches work with their athletes on trampolines with a harness. They have a belt around their waist with ropes and they spin them in the air to help them gain a better sense of orientation. There's the head, counting, flicking back there for the second, flicking back there for the third, then he kicks out in total, making it four somersaults. Wow. James Lichtenstein, as we saw in round three yesterday, unfortunately, we can't see it here today, but he did back five somersaults. And remarkable. And coming up, remarkable is coming off the crazy caterpillar. Walk to the beach. This isn't gonna end, is it? <laughs> 3.25, 303.25 for Guzman. That puts him into 30, psyched to get back into the mix. Beautiful bridge. Many, many photos taken of that over the years. I know I have a bunch in my phone. Miguel Garcia, 31 years old of Colombia. After being a part of the series since 2014 and 21 starts, achieved his personal best result of sixth place. That was last week in Sissikon, Switzerland. And he goes quickly. Joey crazy yeah. time. Whoa. There we go. Guzman knows it. Perhaps the best, most ripped entry we've seen of the day. He didn't waste a single second of the platform, did he? Not a, a second. He had no time to talk. It's funny, like yesterday was a completely different situation. We had completely flat seas, but a lot higher gusts of wind. It took the divers a very, very long time to get off the platform. But today, it seems like they're getting off the platform a lot quicker because the wind is a bit more constant. The challenge is the waves, but Miguel Garcia was like Moses part of the seas for him, <laughs> and he just nailed it. His wife, Silvana, is here. The mother of Maria Paula Quintero, by the way. He's Maria's stepfather, and Silvana is here watching, and they're going to be stoked about this. Wow. Well, wait, you put in the wave calming request yeah, in advance or something? Act. Yeah, what the heck? I think he saw that. Like, he probably was paying attention to the, the ocean just before he dove. He's like, all right, dude, you've got calm seas. You need right. to go. Right here he's like, I, well, I have a clear landing zone. You can see his ankles no. heavily strapped there as well. Very tough impact, about 10 G forces. So imagine traveling at 85 kilometers per hour, and then when you hit the water, you're stopping at about three to four, maximum five meters. I mean, the deceleration is just crazy on the body. A lot of physical conditioning. The athletes do a lot of preseason training. One well, of the most common injuries is actually the groin muscles. When you hit the water, the legs just want to pull apart. So when you hit the water, you've got to squeeze those quads as hard as you can. Miguel Garcia is pretty proud of himself, so he should be. Wonderful stuff. I mean, it's props to the rescue divers, our camera ops in the water. I mean, doing a fantastic job managing. Garcia won 12-2 on that, 336-20. So Garcia moves into the lead. Judges liked it. And he is three to go 12 here on the men's side. So it's Garcia with that 336, puts him on top. 
Hunt still in second. He hasn't even taken his fourth round dive yet. Along with Paredes, Guzman in fourth. In the dark blue are the divers who have not gone yet. And James Lichtenstein of the United States, a 27-year-old. Quite the story with this guy. We call him the party spoiler. <laughs> in his debut three weekends ago in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina, finishing 10th. That's five somersaults. Got the invite for Switzerland. Got on the podium in third place. Ahead of Catalan Adam Pareda yeah. to fourth, losing points and ground to win the King Kaakili Trophy. That's why we call him the party spoiler. Good guy, though. You know, he just doesn't really party. Spoil party. No, yeah, he didn't mean to. He does. Wants to dive well, so. So James Lichtenstein, the wild card diver, trying to prove that he should be a permanent series diver at some point. Guy's been training hard over the past several years to earn a position here on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And I'll tell you what, he probably needs to thank guys like Alessandro De Rose getting the thumbs up to compete here in Poliniano Amare. Joey, he only found out last week. Yeah, he's had a few late calls. He said, you want to do it? He's like, yep, I will take my chances. Take his chances. He does. Oh, look at that wave. Just as he landed coming in and absolutely annihilating the landing area. They call this guy the cat. By that I mean his aerial awareness. He's just like a cat. He knows how to find his feet. And because he becomes from that trampolining background and then he moved on to elite diving, when you combine the two sports, it makes him a formidable athlete, much like Rihanna Nifland coming from trampolining originally and then moving into diving as well. So that seems to be the perfect combination. Not easy when you're a diver, when you're accustomed to landing headfirst, to make that adjustment to landing on your feet. It's a lot harder than you think. Everything comes up so quick, especially yeah. from... Like, I noticed the difference when I was diving from 24, 25 metres, and then as soon as you go to 27 metres, that last two metres, you think you got it, then all of a sudden, bam, uppercut the chin. <laughs> so Lichtenstein tries to manage the walk back to the beach. Gets in second with 330.45. So a good men's competition unfolding. The top seed's coming up shortly. Big battle in the top three. It's going to come down to the wire in the last stop of the season. We'll get to that momentarily. Momentarily, but Andrea Barnaba, 18 years old, from Trieste, far north of here, near the Slovenian border. Youngest in the field, 18 years old. Making his debut, great opportunity. Coached by his idol, Alessandro De Rose. And then the heart rate, this is interesting. Look to the left in the purple. It's his resting heart rate that is tested. And then it's 195 max, 141 beats per minute at the moment. It's a monitor on his arm. Keeping it steady. I'd be nervous. I'm going to be way up there. So the youngster, Whoa. 18 years old, what? <laughs> he just disappeared. Where did he go? Moses has parted the seas once again, Those but appropriately for the local Italian. Wow. Let's give him credit. I mean, that was skill. What an exquisite dive. He only began cliff diving two years ago. It's funny, when asked to describe his biggest weakness, his response was, I can't think of any. <laughs> then, then when he was asked what would he want to read about himself, his response was, the guy without weaknesses. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Developing a strong mindset. Now, if I look at the dive, his pike position, I just need to point this Whoa. up there. Talk about the disappearing act. Look at that beautiful pike position, and Tracer earlier was just talking about that heart rate as well. I mean, that was that was up there, as it is amongst the other athletes. So breathing is really important before you get on the platform. You've got to try and breathe, try and lower the heart rate just a little bit, but you want to be somewhere between being, let's say, really alert and calm. You want to find that perfect sweet spot before you dive. You've got to get in the zen moment, and he definitely found a way to get the job done with that entry. 
So Barnaba will try to navigate the wobbly worm. Oof. Thousands of fans packed in here. The Wicked Walkway, we'll just come up with That's them. That's good, okay. Well, yeah, finally, yeah. he came up with one. <laughs> All right. He'll make his way back. Barnaba getting some experience. And pulls him into second place with a 335-60. Remember, that's all four dives added together in this beautiful area called Pognano Amare. If you haven't been here, you've got to check it out. Tons of history, there's castles, museums, the arts, the culture, spectacular. And the ice cream, oof. Yeah. Out of this world. Trace and I have our own restaurant review column as well. Do. Uh, we just cruise the towns and sample the local cuisine. Nikita Fedotov. Tremendous season going. Consistently in the top six, including a third in Copenhagen. He has a chance to move into the top four overall in the series points. See that degree of difficulty slider starting to ramp its way up into the red zone. Reverse triple somersault, three twists. Good in the air, Joey. But like a lot of the divers today, we're just not seeing those rip entries like we saw out of Miguel Garcia, but it is not easy with the movement of the water. And as you mentioned, that luck comes into play, and you can see that because these guys, you see beautiful entries from week to week to week with the top 12 men in the world. With a dive like this, I mean, sometimes it comes down to the takeoff. Let me look at the takeoff here. Yeah, it looks like he just didn't quite get the rotation he wanted to, so he held on at the last minute, but he just ran out of room to finish the dive. Perhaps a little unlucky with the waves, but in my opinion, I think the takeoff wasn't quite right. When you're doing a dive like this, we have to stay straight at the beginning. It's so, so difficult to get the rotation Ooh. right. I mean, if he was doing the dive, rotating backwards would be a lot easier, but then the tariff would drop down to 4.6, so it's 5.1. So there's a two and a half twist here. Then you enter the pipe position, and right here, the dive just starts getting heavy and heavy and heavy. Perhaps you could have held on a little bit longer to keep the rotation moving, but just did not have time to finish the dive. And a giant uppercut to the chin there. Disappointing for Nikita, but nonetheless, he's just had a, a great season. He's made the pony before. We know he's a real powerhouse. And he's number six to go of 12. So we're halfway through the men. And Miguel Garcia with a 336-2. That is a score to beat. The young Barnaba of Italy in second. Usually we're going to see well into the 400s for the men winning a competition. And this guy has won many before. It is Artem Selchenko, who's won 11 over the years, including here in Poniano Amare in 2016. He's got that blind entry. So cool to watch. Artem Selchenko also won in 2010. It's his 66th career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. He has the most tens besides Gary Hunt. Very talented diver. What's he have, Joey? Such a unique athlete in terms of the types of dives he chooses to perform. Talk about something very interesting after the dive. Like three somersaults, one and a half twists. Pay attention to the last part of the dive. See if you can pick it up. Silchenko, that blind entry, so interesting, very cool to watch. But Joey, I can't imagine how you could dial that dive in. But you could see Miguel Garcia's reaction was like, oh, that was a tough landing. But uh, let me tell you, Artem Silchenko comes from tough stock. He's like, ah, oh, don't worry. Yeah, I got this. I can handle the impact. But uh, formidable athletes. A winner of a King Kai Kelly trophy in the past. Here's the one-up twist into the pipe. Now watch this point. There he sees the water. Now he's blind. So the last part of the dive is called a blind entry. Come
coming up very short of vertical. She's basically using peripheral vision at the end of the dive to try and get a glimpse of where the water is. She's basically blind at one point. Here's the quick glimpse. You see the water. Then there. That's it. You don't see the water. You're trying to look above your toes to see where the water is. You're trying to use markers, the cliff in front of you, so you get an extra degree of difficulty for the blind entry because it's so difficult to adjust for the landing. And on dives like these, he scored tens in the past, just lacking a bit of rotation. And again, with that soupy, wavy, washy water. Whoa, what a hard landing. A sport only for the brave. There's the buckling belt. The mad blue sea serpent, he opted to go around it. So he comes in with 55-2-0. Puts him into fourth with 329-3-0. At 38th, the oldest diver in the field. And here's the walkway to the terrace. I love it. What a way to get it's, to the platform, I mean, huh? Yeah, I mean, this is access through the living room. It's, you know, the platform in the area, the diver's area mounted on the private residence of that rooftop terrace. Catalan Peretta, who we'll see shortly, giving us a sneak preview of what it's like behind the scenes. And that's what makes this event so unique for the divers. Garcia still in the lead. The 336. And check this out right here. In the last nine stops, when you compare Aiden Heslop, the top three guys in the World Series points, look at how consistent he is. That Boston win kind of helped him catapult his way into confidence. And then you have, since down Patrick had a 10th place, and Catlin Peretta just straight across the board, uber consistent. And then, Joey, how about Gary Hunt? I mean, Gary Hunt, very consistent, very steady, but obviously just that one yeah. little slip up. If you have one slip up with a field this competitive, like we have this year, that puts you in the danger zone for that King Kai Kelly trophy. And, and arguably, he could get away with that over the years. Yes. Right? I mean, you could get away with that yeah. eighth place, maybe a seventh, and then a bunch of wins and top threes, but not this season. Not with the likes of Aiden Hesloff, who's on the platform. Looking at the degree of difficulty slide of 5.2. This is called the triple quad. Speaking of Gary Hunt, he was the person who invented this dive. There's Aiden's mother in the middle, Helen. Molly Carlson, his girlfriend, who already dove, looking on. So Heslop, a pivotal moment for him in the overall World Series points. This dive is the men most likely will come down to the last stop for the King Ka Keeley Trophy. quickly it's like a zip watch this he wraps his arms in and then just zips along choosing to wrap with his arms across his chest as opposed to one arm across his torso and one arm above the head but as he comes around he just hones it in dials it in the disappearing act i gotta tell you that was that was one of the best dives i've seen damn and it's a critical moment in the series there is so much at stake You've got to perform well here. It's the penultimate stop. We've only got one more competition after this. That'll be in Sydney in Australia. But Aiden Hesloff, now that is what he needed to do to put some heat on the divers to come. And the Polignano Rodeo begins for him. And he'll try to outrun 
the swells and the waves and back to the town beach. The judges thinking about this one, five of them, the high and the low toss, the remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. And he has a 10, it'll get thrown out, but he'll keep three nine and a halves. And folks, 148-20 and a grand total of 435.80. Of score. Absolutely massive score and flying into the lead. But look at that, Joey. 100 points. 435.80. Let's head down or back up to the platform and check in with David Coltsuri. Dave, what's going on? Thanks, Trace. All right, Gary. So, leading going into today's final round, but Actually in third place in the overall rankings, you're chasing Aiden and Kat. Aiden just smoking his dive. And I loved your response. You were like, it's on. You feeling a little extra pressure? Are you liking this? Uh, the competition just got intense. Um, he's turned it on. Uh, we have to follow that. It's not easy, but I love these kind of competitions. One dive like that is all it takes. Yeah, I love that. And so you've got your front twist coming up. What are you thinking going into this final dive? Oh, just am amuse myself, like enjoy it. I've been struggling with stress this whole time. And uh, you said I'm chasing the others, but it doesn't feel like that today. I feel like I'm being chased and I'm ready to run. Here we go. Enjoy it. Have some fun. Good luck, buddy. Thank you, guys. Back to you. All right. Thanks, Dave Kulturi. Not diving. He's injured. Up reporting. Great interview with Gary Hunt. So Catlin Peretta with an 870 leads the charge. Tight behind Aiden Hesloff. Look at that point spread, guys. And oh, Gary Hunt only six points behind Hesloff. This is going to go down to the wire as Alexei Prigorov makes his way through the town. Heads back up for his dive. He will go after Catlin Peretta. Four left in this men's competition. And Alexei Prigorov, not a strong season at the start, but picking things up as he makes his way and says hello to the local fans and tourists. Here's Preta, the location where he earned all tens across the board from the judges during the required first round dive last season. Overall World Series point leader. He needs nine and a halfs to pull into the lead. Catlin Preda just putting his hand up to the referees and the judges to say, there's some wind. Just give me a moment to recalibrate. Wow, but even, 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 you know, interrupts the best of them, Joey, in that. Good. Wind, you see 32. 33, kind of a mix kilometers per hour in that 19 to 21 miles per hour range. Not super gusty, but yet impactful. So Preda puts one down. That's what he needed, Joey, to stay on top of the World Series points. And he, <laughs> Aiden Heslop is like, wow. I, I can't shake these guys. I continue to try to win competitions. Preda comes back. You got Hunt now starting to pick up the pace. Incredible. This has been a thrilling competition, a thrilling series. The most competitive series we've seen in the men for a very long time. And Catlin Preda, he would have been feeling nervous on the platform. Let's look at the entry. He got the splash. So you could just see that wave just starting to come up making him a little bit shorter of vertical than he would have liked. The thing that is brilliant about Kathleen Preda, the form, the technique, he's an athlete that works tremendously hard on his strength and conditioning. Got the splash down, a smidge short of vertical. Will it be enough? This competition, this season is coming down to the wire. A little bit of split of the legs. The athletes, or the judges, I should say, need to look carefully at the form. Any split of the legs, small deductions there. The talk about style, man. That's written all over Catlin Preda. Except for that part. <laughs> <laughs> he's going he's to crawl across the back of the dragon. He's like, I ain't getting injured on this thing. No way. 
It's a good call. So 427 20 after a 132. So Preda in second behind Aiden Heslop. As Guzman enjoys his walkthrough, his day is wrapped up, but he'll take it all in. <laughs> That's awesome that all the people in town, Joey, have a chance to get up and close, intimate with the divers. That's what it's all about. Alexei like Prigorov now, three to go in the men's competition. Celebrating his 20th career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. As I mentioned, after a slow start to the season, getting a little bit more traction with his diving in terms of results. The only Olympic medalist to compete on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. He won the Olympic bronze, Beijing, 2008, three meter springboard synchro, Joey, and this is no three meter springboard diving tower. No, it is not night and day difference in terms of the technique and the mental aspect. So it's very difficult to concentrate in the sport of cliff diving compared to diving. There's a lot more external factors. But he's a very powerful athlete, very capable. Whew, you see the rough waters. We would need nine and a half from the judges to move into the lead. Whoa, that was a near fall. Wow. Now, when you're standing on the platform there, Trace, you've yeah. got half of your foot on there. You're not standing on the platform with your entire foot. So you're only balancing on your tippy toes. There would have been a big gust of wind there, and that would have put him off balance. It has picked up a bit from yeah. earlier. We just checked it now. It's 22 miles per hour, so that 35, 36 kilometer per hour range. I wish they had a heart monitor on Alexei Prigodov right now. Because <laughs> trust me, I mean, he was just inches away from falling off the platform there. And again, this is his 20th career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. So it's not like he doesn't have any experience. No. So you know when Prigorov backs off, he means it. He's a tough athlete mentally as well. He rarely ever takes a long time to get off the platform. The waves crashing into the cave. Hesitation, Joey, scared me a bit, but oh. what composure for Alexei Prigorov. <laughs> Aiden no Heslov can't believe it. He's like, how did you pull that back together? No way. Like, well, let's look at the replay. You can see it. I mean, we were paying attention there, but there was like a little wobble. <laughs> and then he's like, stuff it. i got to do this. i got to go for it. There's no backing out now. And Aiden Heslop saw that. And he was like, wow. He still managed to pull off the dive with almost a false start from the platform. Regardless, this will be his best finish, by the way. Fifth is his best World Series finish, Joey. That was Portugal 2019 and another two weeks ago, or a few weeks ago in Mostar. Man, he did such a good job adjusting for the dive. So he had a little bit of a wobble. He didn't get the takeoff that he wanted because he kind of wobbled a bit in the beginning. And then he knew he was, he knew he was a little bit slow, so he holds on a little bit longer right at that point there. Now, that was smart. He knew it. That was the most smart thing he could have done at that point, just to keep that rotation moving to try and get that entry to try and impress the judges. Alexei Prigorov, what will be your fate here today? Oh, I may have spoke too soon, because we still have Paredes and Gary Hunt. So depending on this result, we'll see if it's a personal best. Either way, a nice dive for Pigarov, and another nice dive. Trying to work his way to the top. I mean, it should be third place for now, so 421.65. After you add all four dives together. So Alexei Prigorov of Ukraine, now in third. Heslop in first, guaranteed a podium with his 435.80. And Jonathan Paredes has not been in this position in quite some time. Having troubles, a little mental block at the beginning of last season, starting in France. He took the rest of the season off. That was smart. He chilled out, tried to re regain his diving and his confidence, and he's done just that this season. 
with a lot of patience and a lot of time and perhaps paying off because he is the number two qualifier coming into this fourth round. Needs nines to get into first. His attribute is, is Barani, the best Barani in the business. Makes it up for, makes up for the degree of difficulty with execution. Taking his time on the takeoff. Is there grip tape on the end of that, Joey? Yes, there is. It's like a sandpaper-like surface. Really need that grip. As you're taking off, you can see Jonathan Perez visualizing his dive. Trying to feel that right moment to come out. The wind's of the twist. Again. Yep. Pick it up. Now watch Jonathan Perez carefully here. He'll stand backwards and you'll see one foot on the end and then he'll wait for the wind to die down and then he'll move the other foot back just to keep some balance. We saw earlier Alexei Prigorov really struggling with the wind. The wind is changing directions just a bit, Joey. So that impacts between the training rounds and competition rounds. Jonathan Paredes trying to maintain that composure and stay cool off the end of the platform. He gets off at Joey, a little bit of a splash in the landing, but nevertheless, I mean, he's been working his way back and trying so hard to kind of build that confidence. And it looked with that dive and him being in the number two qualifying spot, he's getting there. The journey back to form, got his dives back. No, he's not happy with it though. No, I mean, the previous round dives were just sensational. So he's got to do two and a half twists here. He's got to come out into the pike position. A little bit of a bend of the legs. I think maybe he felt like he was a bit slow. Yes. And now uh, we can see in the replay that his arms have come above his shoulder. Okay, that'll be maximum score four and a half from the judges. So when you land in the water, you have to land in the water with your arms down or below your shoulder. You can see him crimping there. So he felt like he was slow, but that little crimp, that little bend of the legs picked up the rotation, and then it had the opposite effect. It caused too much rotation at the end. So it was slow, then he was too fast. It goes back to your methods of motion, that depth perception and how it can play a factor. Well, this was more like what he was feeling in the air at this point. So he wasn't really looking at the water. It was actually what he's feeling. He was like, OK, I feel like I'm a bit slow. I'll crimp. And then arms above the head. But that's also a safety maneuver. It's called putting the air brakes on. If you put your arms above your head, it slows the dive down. So it's a safety call. But we commend him for standing on a 27-meter tower. So 48-3-0, not the dive Paredes was looking for, 361, he'll settle for fourth with one diver remaining. So off the podium for Paredes, but Prigorov stays on the podium. So indeed it will be a personal best for Alexei Prigorov of his World Series career. So Heslop and Preda on the podium. Guaranteed, but guess who's up? It's Gary Hunt, 91st start on the World Series. Nine-time Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion, who's won four times here in a row, including back-to-back -back wins last year when you had the Puglia stop off the same platform, but this guy is absolutely on a tear last season. He's getting challenged this season, though, Joey, with Heslop and Preda, but nevertheless, you just don't count the guy out after three rounds coming into this fourth round. He, is he the just can't stop him. No, he is the master. And then perfect it tens on that last dive oh, hell last man. season. That was huge. Good night. Last dive on the platform. Just quickly, he needs eight and a half from the judges. Eight and a half to win. his swim trunks. Man, look at Aiden Heslop. Oh. His hands on his mouth going, oh my, oh my. I 
need to sit here and carefully wait for the judges. Remember, after the last stop in Sisakon, he dropped one place to third in the overall points after Heslop, the UC there, delivered that first place knockout punch. But regardless, and whatever you are thinking, this is a guy who cannot be counted out. He's only six points behind Heslop and 30 points behind World Series leader, Kreta. Well, yes, which means he could shake up the leaderboard and take the lead in the series. I mean, with the triple quad, using his experience, Gary Hunt, the cliff diving master, the genius, he's done this dive so many times before. He's dealt with these conditions before. Will his experience prevail? The last man on the platform. Trace, my heart is in the throat. Wow, wow, wow. Gary Hunt, staying firm, staying cool, calm, and collected. So just to give you an understanding of the points, why we talk about the shifting and how quickly it can shift, it's 200 points for the winner. Second place would be 160. So if he pulls ahead of Heslop here, he pulls ahead of him, and most likely Preda in the overall points. But will a 124.95 cut it for Gary Hunt? The master of cliff diving with a 439.95 will win five straight events here in Poniano Amare. Whoa. Wow, wow, wow. The twists and turns we have seen in the Rebel Cliff Diving World Series 2022 is like nothing I have ever, ever seen oh. before. 45th career victory for Gary Hunt. Once the brilliant Brit, now Aiden Hesloff has taken that over as Gary Hunt now resides in France. And that's who he dives for now. As you mentioned, Joey, trying to go to the Olympics. And I love it. Aiden and Heslop was just 12 years of age, idolizing Gary Hunt. But here he is, diving on the world scene, neck and neck against one another. An outstanding men's competition won by Gary Hunt. 439.95. So Heslop in second. <laughs> Gary Hunt will overtake second place. Freda in third. Actually, Gary Hunt should overta overtake the World Series lead with that. Alexei Prigorov with a personal best. Big props to the young Italian divers getting a first time start here in Point Nano Mari in their home country on a rough day for all the divers in the rough seas of the Adriatic. And here's where it all started. Gary Hunt loves this place. Point Nano Mari just so confident seems oh man Joey it's just like it's incredible to watch him. Yeah it's scoring tens on this dive as well. I mean that particular dive was never scored under nine throughout the entire season. Beautiful shot diving from the rooftop of the terrace back to the platform for the optional dive round. Putting him into the lead for the fourth and final dive. Just to keep the pressure on himself and the rest of the field. Gary Hunt, I mean, just what a legend. And you talked about that adaptability between conditions yeah. uh, and how cool he is. Doesn't affect him. He's like, you, you change the wind on me, you change the surface of the water, you throw some waves and some current in there. Nah. So calm. Nah. It really is. So Gary Hunt, the most starts of anyone on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series at 91. He's never missed an event. Big hug to Rihanna Nifflin, who he shared the top of the podium with many times before in winning that King Kong Keeley Trophy at the end of the season. Rihanna Nifflin locking in her sixth. And the World Series points, that ought to do it for Gary Hunt, moves it ahead of Freda and Heslop. So Heslop remains in second, but the big story here is Kathleen Freda now has some work to do at the final stop in Sydney, Australia. Popovich still holds down fourth, and we'll see him return in Sydney. And Nikita Fedotov chipping away, trying to get into the top four. Wow. Oof. Man. And Alexei Prigorov again. Moving his way up on the board.
after a slow start of the season and big props to Jonathan Paredes. Get things back together. And all right. Great competition here in Ponyon Omari, but after completing seven stops of this 2022 season, the World Series concludes with the first ever visit to Australia as Sydney will host the big show from the Royal Botanic Gardens, overlooking one of the most famous buildings in the world, the Sydney Opera House and the Sydney Harbor Bridge, as we still look at some good shots from here in Ponyon Omari. But when we get to Sydney, Australia, I can't wait to see the fireworks and it will be treated by human sparks, Joey, when the world's best dive in that historic bay in Sydney. And uh, Joey, what else can we expect there? You live in Australia. Oh, it's going to be huge. There's a massive group of divers who are going to come along to support Rhiannon Ifland and, of course, all of the other athletes, but it will be one hell of a show. And we're getting closer to witnessing who will win the 2022 King Kai Keeley Trophy. It'll be one of those two on the men's side, including Catlin Ferretta, who is still in the mix. So the top three for the men will come down to the last stop. And on the women's side, it is Rhiannon Iflin, who will secure her sixth King Kai Keeley Trophy of her career. She's already wrapped it up. She has enough points. Nobody can catch her. Molly Carlson had a shot today. Outstanding competition for her. But Rhiannon Iflin is unsurpassable. And that will wrap it up until the next stop. So from Polonia Omar, Italy, that's it for today's coverage of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And congratulations once again, Rhiannon Iflin and Gary Hunt. Looking forward to seeing you again in Sydney, Australia for the grand finale next month. That is October 15th. Until then, on behalf of Joey Zuber, Dave Colturi, Dave O.C., and our entire production team, I'm Trace Worthington. Thanks for watching.